Helicopters are incredibly complex machines and they take a long time to build. And helicopters such as the Lynx are constructed from thousands of parts. We have come to Augusta Westland to meet some of the engineers who design and construct helicopters. So let's find out how to build a helicopter in this edition of Young Eagles. Agasta Westland have been building helicopters for the Army Air Corps for over 40 years. They supplied them with the Scout, Gazelle, Lynx and Apache helicopters. And their engineers built the fastest helicopter in the world, a specially modified Lynx which has held the World Helicopter Speed Record for over 20 years. We're here with Leanne and Chris, engineering apprentices here at Augusta Westland and they're working on an exciting project. So thank you for inviting us down here today. What is the new project you're working on? Well, you've joined us at a really exciting time. We've been helping to build the new Wildcat helicopter, which is the latest model in a successful Lynx family of helicopters that have been built here at a Yeovil factory to be going into service with the British Army and the Navy. We're building the first aircraft now and it will soon be flying for the very first time. We'd like to show you how it's been made and some of the things we've been working on. That sounds great. So Izzy, if you come with me, I'll show you how it's been designed. And Jake, we can go and see how some of the components have been manufactured. Okay. This is the design office. This is where the Wildcat has been designed. This is the first process of making it. It must be really complicated to, to design it. Oh yes, there's something really special about the Wildcat. If you can speak to Lyndon, he'll tell you more about the process. Hi Linda, this is Izzy, she's from Young Eagles and she's here today to find out about how a helicopter is manufactured. Hello Izzy, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, I'm a design engineer on uh, Wildcat. Um, what I'd like to show you is uh, how we used to produce the aircraft on old pencil drawings. Obviously you could, this is an assembly of some of the flight controls and it's fairly complicated, um, composing of hundreds of components. Um, each have to be individually drawn um, and obviously this takes a lot of time and uh, experience and skill and additionally this is how a helicopter was designed and there could be several thousands of these drawings for a complete helicopter. What we do on Wildcat which is completely different now we've gone digital. This is an example of one of our flight controls which we actually model up in 3D. Once we've modelled each of the individual parts which in the old system we'd have to draw up separately again taking an extreme amount of time we can then model it up and we build the helicopter up from there. You can see from the model that I've got on the screen, we've got pretty much the whole aircraft in 3D. So you can even look inside the aircraft? Yep. Essentially what we've got on the screen is exactly what we've got out on the shop floor being built today. How long does it take to do this drawing compared to the ones on the paper? It's a lot quicker, probably about a third of the time. So what happens when the designs are completed? OK, once the designs have completed, they're then released and sent off to production engineering, who then work out how to turn those into physical components. Once the components are made, they are then assembled into the final helicopter. And here we are in the main assembly, where, as you can see, we have different aircraft all at different stages of manufacture. This is where all the components come in and are put on the aircraft. So how long does it take to build one of these? It takes about six months. And over here we have the Wildcat, which we'll just go and take a look at. This is the airframe, and this is how it comes in before the assembly starts. So where do all the components come from? Uh, they come from a variety of different sources, but the transmissions on the rotor blades are made here. The manufacturing engineers work with the electronic drawings from the design office and they programme the various machines to produce the components. Matt will explain. OK, so this is a drawing of an input pinion for an IGB gearbox. Um, we receive from design this Katia model here. Um, using this we then create a series of manufacturing instructions. Uh, as you can see here, this is the Katia model. Um, which has various stages where we need to remove the material from. Um, and then from that, we then create process sheets and instructions for the guys on the shop floor to work to, 
guys in the machines can then create an actual physical part. It takes 80 operations to complete this component from start to finish. And in addition to the mechanical components, the helicopters also need electrical systems. So what's this? I thought everything was done by computer now, digital design. This is the loom shop. This is where the wiring looms for each individual helicopter are made. So they're all, all different? Yes, each one's specific for the helicopter. They look really complicated. Over there's Chris, who can tell you more about it. So Chris, this looks incredibly complicated. What is it all for? OK, this is a loom for uh, the Lynx helicopter, actually. Uh, it's got uh, all different parts. For example, this here is for the power of the loom, and that's where the main power source will come from. And you've got other connectors. For example, this one here, this is for the um, signals to um, what they would call a black box on the helicopter, and that records all the voice or any actions from the helicopter in case of, for example, if an accident occurred, they could go back to the black box and find out exactly what happened. Okay, and then there's plugs like this as well. This one here would be used for the head-up displays in the cockpit of the helicopter. Okay, so obviously uh, the pilots have got visual um, displays of exactly how to control the aircraft and what they're doing. So how long does it take to make one of these? Uh, this specific loom itself, uh, well, it's nearly finished. I'm just finishing it off here. Um, but it would be, uh, the aim would be to finish this within at least a week. So a really long time. I better let you get to work. Thank you. Back in the main production hall, all of the components come together for the assembly of the helicopters. And I have met up with Will, who is using the Katia digital design system, to find out where to fit the next component on the Wildcat. Okay, so here we have the drive shaft support mount, which is what we want. So we find this on Katia to find out where we locate on the aircraft. So we want to start on this screen, and there's two screens, one behind the other. The other is going to show where the whereabouts on the aircraft it fits. So if we highlight the part, we can then put it on the secondary screen and find out where on the aircraft we want to go, which is along the tail, like that. So this is the rear drive shaft support for number four and number three. So if we want to go to the aircraft, We'll find out where it goes. So this is where Katia is telling us that the component's gonna fit, which is along the tail section, which we have here. Um, it's saying that we, it's drive shaft position number three to four, which is here, because we've got drive shaft four, drive shaft three. Um, so basically we line up the component and hopefully fit the bolts through and tighten them down, which is. So is using the computer easier than using a paper drawer? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can break down components, see them in 3D. It just helps a lot to be able to see whereabouts in the aircraft we're going to fit the part. Yeah. Well, designing and building the Wildcat is certainly a complex but exciting job. And personally, I'm really impressed with the way the digital 3D design process brings everything together. But what inspired Leanne and Chris to train as engineers? Well, because there are lots of different opportunities involved in the job, you get to see the development of the aircraft and get to work in some areas of uh, like design and production. And because you're working on the job as opposed to sitting in a classroom and you get a qualification at the end of it, which means that you could go on and work further in the company. At the moment, I'm working in the manufacturing engineering department and I'm not sure where my career is going to take me with Augusta Westland, but I know that there are a lot of senior people who started their careers here as trainees. Engineering was always a passion at school and with Augusta Western I could follow my passion through from being able to see the aircraft designed and manufactured and then finally be able to see it flying. And once the construction of the Wildcat is complete, it needs to be flown. And in our next show, we'll be meeting the team of test pilots who have to put their trust in the engineers and take to the air in the Wildcat for its very first flight.